episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. Hey guys, Evan from Gym Aware. We're really happy to be supporting Coach DeMayo's podcast series once again. For those that don't know, our main product is Gym Aware. It's the gold standard for measuring performance and implementing velocity-based training in the weight room. It excels in busy team training environments, and for many coaches, it's the Swiss Army knife of their toolkit. The Gym Aware is used for athlete profiling, jump testing, fatigue monitoring, and for listing within velocity zones. The system provides real-time feedback on individual targets, plus it's got an impressive range of leaderboards. Now, for those that are after a VBT device that's affordable, for the individual and for smaller groups, we recently released our new laser-based product, Flex. Importantly, it's been independently validated and proven to be both accurate and reliable. So if you're interested in either product, or you want to learn more about the velocity-based training and how it can help you as a coach, Check out our website or contact us directly. So in the meantime, we trust you enjoy the Coach DeMayo's podcast, Outside the Rack. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 90th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper in the minds of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance, learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the assistant strength and conditioning coach at the University of Oregon, Courtney Walden. Courtney, thanks for being with us today. Great to be here. Yeah. So smooth. <laughs> I'll take what are adjectives not used with Jay DeMeo for a thousand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was though, clean, smooth. I liked it. It was nice. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, and it's good that we got to catch up a bit before. I'm glad things are great. By this time, everybody will know that you are one of our sensational presenters for CVASP this summer. Some sort of, well, it's May, so it feels like summer, but yeah. it's still spring down sure. here. But uh, stoked to have you on board with that, too. So this excited to be on that. That's going to be a blast. Yeah, super fired up. Bunch but of cool before, presenters, eh? Oh, dude, and it's going to be the different days and getting people interactive. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Super excited. But before we get too far into this, who was Courtney? Always a tough question, right? Like, everyone's like, has to analyze themselves. Who am I? Uh, but uh, the... I think like immediately I go into the typical, I think of like people's Instagram bios. I'm a, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a coach, a mentor, but I'm, I think I'm like maybe more on a spiritual level. I think I'm a spiritual being. I'm a, I'm a person that is just out here doing the best they can. Um, thinking about other people. I'm a really caring person. Um, I, I really am, I see myself as someone that I, I'm going to try to give the best that I can out there today. And maybe it's to one person, maybe I missed the mark, but I know I'm always going to, I'm going to try to be that person for other people. Cause I've had some amazing people in my life and I just, that's, I hope that I can do that for other people. So I'm, that's, that's me. I'm, I'm caring. <laughs> I dig it. I think that a spiritual being out there doing the best she can. I think that's a pretty, pretty bullseye description. Like from what I've gathered through our conversations, I think that, yeah, like that's, that's, that's good. I, I like that. Thank you. Yeah. But listen, a Wisconsin girl who's been out mm -hmm. to the East coast and now all the way back in the top West left coast. corner of the country here all over the place, different sports, different activities, 
different situations, even some crazy ones of late. Yeah. Fired up to hear this one. If you wouldn't mind, describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. See, I have, I love that question. And that one, I really thought of a lot of them. Um, and I was like, I got to pick, just pick one, but I, I can only get down to two. So I, there's, I remember having one huge epiphany and it probably sounds so small. And it was actually in a, at University of Texas when I was in grad school and we had a um, professor hat for one of our classes. It was in a sports psych uh, type class. Part of our grade was to do a gratitude journal every day for 30 days. Um, you had to write three things down, had to be three different things every day. Uh, and it was a big part of our grade. So it was like, if you miss, if you don't do it one day, it's, it really hurts your grade. And I started getting into a routine of it. And I was driving on, on the bridge going into downtown Austin. And I like got into the, I merged into the traffic and I got to move over all three lanes. Like people just let me go by. And I was like, wow, it's never that easy. So I thought, oh, I'm going to write that in my gratitude journal. And then I, that was the change for me where I realized like never would I recognize something small like that and say, oh, wow, I'm really grateful for it. And now I started to get into a routine where I was looking for those things. And I think like anyone, especially at by the time you're in college, everyone and anyone has gone through trauma, either big T or little T trauma at that point in your life. Um, I think it's a tool for people that have had that our minds are made to kind of go through that protective what's what's bad has happened. How can I prevent that from happening? We really love to focus on that stuff. And it was just a tool for me that made me grateful. And I am forever grateful for that experience. And I think now I consider myself a grateful person and my internal dialogue, my, my life inside my own mind is so different because I did that. And I, I remember being a young strength coach and I thought maybe I like, after I had had that experience, I was like, wow, maybe I'm just lucky people like a lot of people feeling like, man, these hours are so bad or like the, the, situation I'm in I'm doing so much work and I'm not I'm maybe not getting a lot out of it I'm in an internship and I'm working my butt off and I'm I'm paying for school right now and um and I remember thinking wow maybe I'm just I'm really lucky when I went out to army I remember thinking like, maybe I'm just really lucky because I felt I didn't feel like that I felt so grateful for all the situations that I was in and I started to realize later that it's no, no person situation. Everyone has bad stuff. Everyone has those, those traumas or uh, those types of past experiences, but it's that mindset. And that was really, I'm, um, I thought it, I honestly thought it was a stupid exercise when we did it in school. I was like, what an easy way to get a freaking A. Like I was like, this is a grad school class. Like, but he, that, that exercise changed my life. And it, I do, I, to this day, I do gratitude daily. So, um, I'm, so grateful for that. And my other one is um, kind of along those lines too. It's from Kevin Schultz at Wisconsin. It was after I had already learned this gratitude thing. I went out to Wisconsin for um, a second part of my grad internship. And he suggested, I told him I wasn't a morning person. And he was like, it's gonna be a problem if you're in strength and conditioning, like you've got to be a morning person. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, I think it's just something that you are, you know, you either are a morning person or you're not. And he told me to read the book Miracle Morning. And honestly, you've read that? It's, uh, yeah. When I, yeah, I started it. The language is almost, I was in grad school at the time. So I was like, this is not going to be a good book because I'm used to reading research articles right now. And this was like basic, like really introductory things about like how to create a morning routine, like how to be intentional with your morning. And, uh, Again, I didn't think it was that important of a thing when I was doing it, but because someone important suggested it to me, I read the book and it, I missed an alarm one time because of it, because I woke up early and I was like, I'm going to meditate and I'm going to write my journal. And I ended up falling asleep 
after I had already woken up and I didn't set a second alarm. So I missed, I had one bad experience from waking up early. And then after that, I was like, I realized how important routines are and being intentional with your time and how much that can actually change your day. And if you want to be a morning person, you can be a morning person. doesn't matter. Like, I really think it's, it's something you can change your sleep schedule. You can, you can set stuff up and, and maybe morning for you is 8 a.m. Maybe it's not 6.30 or 5.30 or Jocko Whaling to 4.30, whatever time he wakes up at. But um, yeah, that carried me a lot at Army, um, being intentional with your time and creating routines that, that mirror the kind of life that you want to live. You're creating a routine that is, is intentional with what you're doing every little section of your day. And it might start with the morning and then might turn to a bedtime routine you also have, and then maybe a midday routine that you're doing. And um, that was huge for me. It made me a better coach because of it. And Miracle Morning, it's kind of a simple book, um, but really good, so. Yes, simple book kind of has a little bit of, there's some marketing to the other things that he does in there too, a little yep. bit. Um, but no, like, it's funny because you were talking about the gratitude journal. And that was actually the first thing I thought of. So I'm like, that's one of the things he says you're supposed to do in the morning is, is your journaling and those sort of things. But like, when you're talking about that, do you think that that's almost like the secret or like the law of attraction in a way that like, the more you were talking about things that you were grateful for, the more things you noticed you were grateful for? Totally. If you're an anxious person, right? And you're you're, you're constantly in your head thinking about the bad things that happen, you verbalize that more often, right? You're someone who's more likely to complain about the traffic that when that you had coming into work, instead of being that weirdly positive person that when you come in, you're like, I got to move over four lanes today in traffic. Like, that's a weird, positive thing to just bring to other people's day. And if that's what you're talking about, instead of the opposite side of that, yeah, I think you start attracting other people who are positive you start building better relationships because you're someone who's bringing up other people on a regular basis because you're recognizing when they do things for you and being grateful for that and instead of just like I, I I think that's huge especially in at my time I was interning being grateful for the opportunity that they're giving you and the chance to learn from them and even though it's hard as heck like being able to be there I mean you should be grateful to be there so yeah that was that was huge for me I think the law of attraction is something that people misinterpret a little bit too I think that they sit there and it might have been Gary Vaynerchuk who talked about it where he's like it's really cool to sit there and just be like I'm gonna buy a yacht I keep saying like I'm gonna buy a yacht and you think you can talk something into existence, but I don't know if that's necessarily what it is more in a sense that like what you're speaking of, where the more, it's kind of like the opposite of my phone or my keys. The more I'm looking for my phone or my keys, I'm never going to find them. Sure. But like when you're looking for things on a broader spectrum, like the good, you're mm -hmm. going to find more of that. And I think mm -hmm. that that's really where it's more vital. 100%. I I totally agree. I think there's, there's, when I think of my time at Texas or my time at Wisconsin or my time at Army, there's, I was a, an assistant strength coach was with a other, other, bunch of other assistant strength coaches. And we had a lot of similar experiences, but how you, when I leave, when I left Army or left Texas, how do I look back on that? I see so many amazing positive things I had where other, someone else might see that situation as wow I had I had terrible hours and it was really it was really hard on my relationship at the time or whatever it was but the, I I can pull out all the positive things and I think that's a power you have to be able to do that if if you want to experience and live a positive life yeah and because let's be honest there's a lot of things that could suck about being a coach totally i mean just like the fact that you're talking about being a morning person and this and that like oh yeah i mean there's there's check one you know like uh -huh. it's, it just is what it is but i like i still think if you you know in the, at army we had there were 5 30 a.m work 
workouts. The cadets had to be there at 5.30. Like that's, they'd leave their dorms. They couldn't leave any sooner than 5.20, leave the barracks. And they had to run up the hill to make it for a 5.30 or 5.35 AM lift. And like, it's, you can, you can sit there and think like, oh man, like I have to go to this morning lift. And, and when you start changing that to like, I get to, or I see a, I still think of like a couple military um, personnel that would be there in the morning before I was there that were just getting their own workout in. And I think I get to be up early and watch this amazing uh, full bird colonel come in and get his lift in and inspire me today before I start my workout. Like I get to see that. I get to these, I'm happy that these athletes get to come in and get this workout in and they have a little more free time the rest of their day. Like you can phrase it however you want to. Does it suck to wake up early? If, if you want it, if, if, if you think it sucks, then yeah, it does suck. But if you don't phrase it like that and you think about it in the positive way, then it doesn't suck. It feels cool to be up before other people too. Like you, I don't know. I think you can, you can make it what you want it. Can always make it the way you want it, you know? Mm-hmm. But as someone who's constantly striving to find the good and keeps looking to, to grow and evolve and, and become better. I'm excited for this second question too. Sure. If Courtney could ask one question and she knows she would get the answer, what would that be and why? Mine is about, I think it kind of comes back to like my, my nature of, I I really want to be of service to other people and I think my question would be something along the lines of, um, I I guess I I have this belief that like everyone has something unique or special about their history or their personal experiences or the allotment of books that they've read or whatever it is, quotes that they've favorited, like um, everyone's unique in that way. Um, And I, I think in any given situation, you have something unique to bring to it. Um, And I think knowing what that is, is really difficult. Uh, So I think mine would be something along the lines of in an act of service, like, um, like what is unique about me that I can bring to this situation or how I, how can I bring value? Um, And if I always knew that, then I wouldn't be missing the mark. Cause I guess I think a fear for me is that um, I think of a very specific like coaching situation. If if an athlete was in there training that day and and I maybe noticed that something was off or um, it was it was visible that something was off with them, and I I missed the mark on like maybe not pulling them aside that day, or maybe I do pull them aside and I just always want to be able to give them that, be able to be supportive or be able to give in that situation and and it might not be like I always have the right advice to give or but just maybe all that they need in that moment is for someone to recognize that they're not doing well or maybe it's that they are doing well and I recognize that and just knowing what what someone else needs or or how I can bring value to them in any given situation I think would be amazing to know. That's pretty awesome too, because I think that asking that in an individual sense would then uh, force is the wrong word, but I don't know another verb to use there, but like force them to think about how you specifically can be better. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think, I, I think of like, when I'm asking this question, it's maybe not that I'm asking the question to this person specifically. Um, and maybe it would be like, I'm asking like this all knowing sense of like, what does this person need right now? Um, maybe they don't have the language to describe it or uh, yeah, they, they, might, they might not have any clue what it actually is that they need. But if I for some, somehow had just had that like intuition or ha- was able to ask that all knowing question of like, what, what can I contribute to them right now? Then I think that would be a cool superpower to have. That's awesome. I, I dig that, that's great. But as someone who has just finished basketball season and is rolling into softball season, mm-hmm. at some point, Courtney's going to need to come back to neutral. So yeah. what's your escape? 
I'm a hiker. I don't know if, if um, have you ever heard of like forest bathing? I wouldn't take it that far. Uh, pe- for- forest bathing is like a, a cool, I think it's like uh, a Japanese um, activity that was cre- like originally started like that as forest, the phrase forest bathing. Um, but I'm, I am a hiker and to me like being at peace in nature is my thing. So Oregon out here for me is the place to do it. There's um, so many amazing spots. And not only do I, I love, I don't listen to music or I love going by myself. I'm a big, I've done a lot of like long trips by myself of hiking and like backpacking, doing some backcountry stuff. Um, it is this ultimate, like, I love the activity of it. I love that I get this workout from it. Um, a little bit of a, not so much in Oregon, there's not a ton of like predators here, but in Glacier National Park, there's grizzly bears or black bears or staying out in the woods and kind of having that like, um, I don't know, like that sense of like, you know, life balance here, like at any moment, like that you could be put in a situation, I could break my ankle by myself out here. And I'd have to figure out how to survive by myself, like, or get back to get help. I I love kind of that balance. And I think it really brings you present. So it's like my form of meditation. It's like when, or trail running, when you're out there, you're thinking about every step you're taking. You, the only thing you're connected to is your breath and, and hearing like, did I just, I, I used to go trail running a lot when I was at West Point and there's a lot of black bears in that area. And I would run this one trail. It was actually, it was like right off the highway and it's this gorgeous, like mountainous landscape and really wooded. And there's tons of black bears there. I used to see them all the time. And um, I would trail run on that spot, knowing like all of a sudden, if I, if you hear something, you need to be aware of your surroundings at all times. And it was just, it, to me, it's just one of the coolest forms of like, meditation active meditation um kind of brings that survival instinct out and i love it that's that's my thing yeah you know the northwest is a pretty good spot for it it's great it's an awesome spot i do wish there were more uh i don't want to say more predators because that's maybe but i love bears i'm like i'm all i any story you have about a black bear or grizzly bear, I'd love to hear it. Um, that's just, I, I think my dad passed it down to me. He has this kind of like obsession with grizzly bears and I I live that. So I was joking with a friend before that there's maybe not enough bear here for me, but that's about it. <laughs> it's two things that I don't think I ever thought I would hear someone say. Um, and also another thing I never thought I'd say, I've got a bear story for you, but we'll talk after we stop recording. So, okay. but, uh, Courtney, I, I truly am grateful for your time. This is awesome. And, you know, I think one other thing that needs to be said out here in the open and is going to be said to other people and in, in other ways as well. But uh, one thing that needs to be said too is is kudos to you for taking a stand and doing what you guys did, you know, about well, when this comes out, it'll be about two months ago uh, to make sure that, you know, those, those student athletes were taken care of and that those things were done. And, you know, I think that a lot of people don't understand. It's more than just putting out a post when you're actually in their bubble. So that that took some guts. So what you guys did, that was that was great. And kudos to you for that. Thank you. We appreciate it. And appreciate the support that we got from a lot of our friends in the coaching world. I mean, I had so many people reach out to me and say, one, just give us support for what was happening and saying, like, we appreciate you doing that. I appreciate it as a coach, you know, I like I as a father, as a brother, whatever it was, you know, that's, that's a big deal to me. Um, and, and then not just saying that privately to us too, but also like voicing that, that was huge for us too. So I really appreciated other people's support there and 
I'm happy they made some changes and hopefully we keep that conversation going. So no doubt, no yeah. doubt. And we will see you very shortly. In yes. Steve Asps. We're stoked for that. And we'll be in touch soon. Cheers. Sounds good. Thanks, Jay. Thank you.